Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Cloak and Stagger Plays D&D. We appreciate everyone who was here with us last week, and we certainly appreciate those of you this week. Uh, wanted to give a quick shout-out to the followers since we uh, last played. Uh, Dungeon Hunters, Fraley17, and Lacey Cakes 28 Thank you, Lacey thank you, cakes. thank you for the support. We really, really appreciate it. Um, so, if you're watching tonight for the first time, or if you're a returning viewer, uh, and you haven't given us a follow if you enjoy us, we really, really appreciate it. Um, we do this every Saturday at 8. So, uh, with that being said, we start off our games every week with a recap of what happened the previous week. Uh, who would like to give that recap tonight? You're hiding. Everybody's looking at Brad. I mean, I can do it if Brad doesn't want to, but I might need some help. But... We can, we can, we can double do it then. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can get the inspiration, but I can be your phone a friend option. Can we like give the inspiration when needed to whoever? <laughs> no, we got like a team one, like yeah. me, me, me. <laughs> I do this one. Team inspiration. Um, so I remember Brad remembers uh, being really mad at Patron. That's it's what he mostly remembers, uh, as well as. Fighting some goo thing. Um, and from there, we kind of killed it, we think. Thanks. So. <laughs> I hope so. Um, and then we spent a long time in a tunnel again, walking. Then we came across Goblin of some sort. Not Goblin, yeah, yeah, dwarf. Tell me. It was like a stalagmite, stalactite thing. I don't know what it was. Oh, yeah. What's the, it called? The Roper. Yeah, Roper. Roper. Mm hmm. Mm. Uh, and then, and then. <laughs> we killed that. <laughs> killed the roper. Yep. I went into its stomach, got some things. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. Uh, then we continued down the tunnel, I think. We or kept going. We? Yeah. Did, yeah. I found these after the roper. I got some bracers. Got some bracers. Shiny. Presents. Shiny bracers. Uh, I got this, too. I got a, I can't pronounce the P word here. <laughs> Periapt. Sure. Of wound closure. <laughs> a pariah. <laughs> pariah pa, 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 pa. Puh. A puh of wound closure. Necklace. There you go. It's a pretty necklace with little hands How on How nice. It. How nice. How'd you get it? Brad gave it to me. Uh, I gave him some uh, money. Oh, yeah. She she paid me 50 gold when I only asked her five. Mm. That's a bro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll fill it... <laughs> Well, okay. and then... I, I'm gonna, oh, are you done? Okay. I didn't know. You'd and then like we kept right moving right on, and then we saw two dwarves that were bound and tied. And one of them was already dead, though. And then the other one wasn't. And they were like, oh, there's a cool gauntlet that we were looking for. Um, but there are fire... Newts. Newts. That are running amok. And Marcus. then, yeah, then we stopped. Okay. Uh, you know what? You both get inspiration. Woo! That was a little effect, you know? There you go. Yeah. Don't get used to that, though. <laughs> um, so, yes. You cleared your way through the cavern. You defeated the roper. You found some goodies. You found a blown-out hole in the back of this uh, cavern. You climbed your way. You found yourself back up in the tunnel that you had been traveling from the Wormheart Mine for what seemed like days. Forever. Uh, until... Uh, as you said, you came upon an opening where it got hotter and hotter as you traveled. Orange, reddish light started to fill the, uh, uh, the, the cave, the cavern, the tunnel that you're in. Until, yes, you found a couple of uh, dwarves who were bound. Um, they told you that the uh, place... They, well, they first told you not to go to the Wormheart Mine because there's a dragon there. Uh, a little late for that. Um... But uh, one of the two of these uh, drawers were dead, but they did tell you uh, that they were captured. Uh, they have a scouting party that <clears throat> kind of watches this place that they call Hrakhamar. Um, it used to be owned by the drawers, but they had to leave during uh, volcanic activity. Uh, and during that time, the fire nukes <laughs> and the kobolds took it over. Um, and now they have... Uh, captured a couple of these uh, scouts um, and he is has told you that his shackles can only be unbound with 
a key, an enchanted key, uh, from the head warlock uh, that leads this band of fires in Rakhimar. Um, they also said that there is a treasury here uh, that contains uh, a gauntlet that is typically worn by the overseer of Rakhimar, and that to the right uh, dwarf in the port of Nizaru, where we began our adventure, uh, that could fetch you a very hefty prize, possibly something more than gold. So, uh, as you all decided to continue uh, deeper into uh, Rakhimar, uh, Lucan and Patron, who our players are not here with us today, uh, there appears to be a bug going around, um, they have decided to stay and help heal and guard this dwarf so as to hopefully lead him out of the cave back to the rest of his party, assuming they are still alive. And that's where we're going to pick up today. Did you hit record? I did hit record. I hit it late. <laughs> I hit it late. I never remember to record. So that's why if anybody watches this on YouTube, you see us come in halfway through the recap almost every week. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a trait now, so, yeah, so yeah. it's, it's, it's endearing. Um, the other thing is I'm taking votes on names for this right now. His name's uh, Mitch Connor. Um, for now. Uh, but I'm open to suggestions. So You drinking out of Mitch Connor's skull? I'm drinking out of Mitch Connor's skull. It's dark. So, uh, if you have a suggestion, put it in the chat, leave it in the suggestion box, put it on the face, whatever, whatever. I'm open to it. Cheers. Okay. So, you have walked out of this uh, cavern uh, opening uh, where the dwarves were being holed up. Uh, and to your right, you see the direction that you came from. Tracks that just kind of go on and on and on and on and on um, into the uh, darkness. Um, to your left, uh, you see uh, an opening in the cave uh, and this kind of orange light, this orange hue uh, filters in through that opening. And it's about mm, it's about twenty feet in front of you. Well, um, so wait, we're right outside of the little dwarves hidey hole, and we're we're not at the next night hidey hole. That is actually the hidey hole that the dwarves are in. Oh, the second one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, this one right there. So at the end of last session, I had walked out and passed without a trace on all of us. Yes. So, just as a reminder, for the next hour, long as my focus isn't crocused, uh, <laughs> we all gain plus 10 to all stealth checks, can only be tracked by magical means, and well, I didn't put down, we don't produce any sound, so I guess we're, I guess we're just really quiet, we're really sneaky and quiet. Freaking Operation plus. Delta Team, uh, Lu Lucan uh, turns to you all and says, <clears throat> Guys, I'm going to stay here and help heal this dwarf so that he doesn't die while we're trying to find the key. Okay, well, just keep dragon bait. Spotty safe, okay? Okay. Patron, will you stay with me? Yes. <laughs> it's a pretty good patron. Thank you. Okay, now we're set. <laughs> okay, you, you two do that and we'll... We'll see to the rest. If, if everyone, uh, are you with me? Are you, are you with me? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ready. Okay. Let's uh, crouch down and move forward. And we'll, we'll start. Heading towards the north? Yes. Okay. Uh, when you move <coughs> further forward and get to this uh, wide opening, um, you see... Oh, wait, wait. We're stealthing, by the way. If we didn't make that clear. I, I assumed. Okay. I, I, assumed I make it assumed. super clear. All right. Well, let me ask you this. I know you're stealthing. I'm pretty sure she's stealthy. Sorry, lady. Oh, oh yeah, man. Brad's always stealthy. Okay. <laughs> they just kicked our dog by accident. Oh. She's literally right under me. Sorry, baby bug. Sorry. You okay? 
You all right? You can lay your head back down. Oh, she actually popped up. Look at that. These tracks aren't like, oh my, oh my. Oh. <laughs> um, is, so. Is that lava? It's probably lava. The floor probably. is lava. <laughs> A cavern of molten magma. Magma. Bubbles and flames before you. The cavern walls are lined with metal gantries and cranes that su support immense uh, crucibles of scorched clay. Um, there are huge chains that actually stretch across uh, the span um, uh, of the cavern over this uh, a couple places of this magma, apparently to, to shuttle multi-ton buckets of ore across this lava. Um, the heat from this room, now that you've kind of walked into it, uh, it takes your breath away. It brings water uh, to your <coughs> eyes and, and just bakes your skin. It is so hot. It's almost hard to breathe. And from where you stand, the only obvious way across this lava is the narrow trestle in front of you uh, that's built for rail carts. Um, and then in the distance, you hear kind of an echo almost of a rhythmic uh, hammering of like a hammer to steel um, just off in the distance somewhere. Is this heat like, am I, I, I know I'm probably, I'm probably sweating like there's no tomorrow right yes. now, but is this slowly, do I feel like a little less competent in my capabilities due to this heat? Kind of close. You're close. on the verge, but you're still able to maintain focus. Okay, cool. Okay. I, I guess for now, I mean, aside from acknowledging it's hot as balls, I'm just going <laughs> to... Uh, actually, does it sound like it's coming from straight ahead down the cart uh, track? In this cavern, it's, hard, it's to tell. hard to tell because the ceiling's probably 40, 50 feet up. Um, there's a lot of sound from just the, the magma underneath you. Um, but that that rhythmic hammering, and it's almost like it's in perfect sync. Just ding. Any ding. any like ding. weird scout type bros on the sides of these tracks, or if it uh, <coughs> make a perception check. Twelve. Uh, looking around, you don't see uh, any body kind of trying to scout out or standing guard or looking around. Stealthing on. Okay, continuing across the bridge. Mm hmm. Okay. I'm super stinky. So, when you continue across, uh, you see. Uh, how far do you want to go? Um, basically, until it feels like I'm going into unknown. <laughs> so, I would imagine up to where the, the rock wall begins again. Okay. So, you make your way uh, a little further north, and you see another alcove kind of lead off. Uh, to the west, just a hair. Uh, the tracks continue uh, forward, um, but then you can uh, kind of make out in the distance that it does take a turn <coughs> to the right. Um, <coughs> this particular room uh, opening up, I'll go ahead and just do this here, make my life easier. There's another set of tracks that kind of double back. So basically there's a dual set of tracks continuing north and taking that right-hand curve. Uh, and then there's w one of those two tracks is the one you're on, and then there's another one that seems to kind of go back the other way. Is, it, is that area well lit, like to my left? No. Okay. Brad. Yes. Um, it's getting rather dark up ahead. You mind taking point? Oh, specifically down that pathway, and I point towards the, the left of the track. Or to our left. Yeah. Oh, and I'll sneakily beeline directly where his finger is pointing. So if he was pointing at a wall, I'm walking straight to that wall. was <laughs> pointing to a wall. Yes, you, you, <laughs> yes, it was a wall. Okay. Well, I would just run straight into it. Is this good? What do you see in front of you? And I peek down the so railway. You look down the railway. No, not, uh, well, down, the, down that left alcove. Oh, down the left alcove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Mr. Gore, can you see in the dark? Oh. Uh, aside from yeah. uh, some Me too. random loose rocks and stalagmites, uh, nothing. And this stalagmite doesn't reach out to grab you. 
Nothing but little baby things that we thought. Yeah. Um, Don't worry about it. I, all right. Um, did you say you could see in the dark as well? Huh? Well, shit. I, um... It's just, is it like pitch black to me straight down these tracks? Uh, the the glow of the uh, lava or liquid uh, Cheetos, as somebody in the chat called it, um, does kind of fade, you know, down to the end of this. Uh, so you can see that the end of that wall there. So it's it's dimly lit, I would say. Okay, I'll work with that. I'll, I'll continue north along the tracks until I can get a bigger look at this this area. Okay. Um, so, when you make it to that second alcove, and you take a look down there, um, it is another dead end. However, there are multiple wooden, um, almost like hitching uh, that are um, in there, and tied to them, uh, you see probably dozens uh, of these creatures, t- like kind of tethered to these posts. Um, they look like scaly, bless you, scaly, featherless, uh, bird, reptile hybrids. Um, they're almost as big as a horse. Um, what? It almost kind of looks like a cross between a, a, like a lizard and an ostrich a little bit. They're very large, um, but they have red and white scales. They don't have feathers. They're completely scaled um, with a black beak, kind of a small head, but a large black beak, and then tiny like useless kind of T-Rex chicken wing arms. Um, and uh, at, at current moment, they don't notice you. I'm comfortable assessing that I'm not gonna, that we're not gonna mess with that. So... What even is I'm confused. Uh, chicken dinosaur creatures. Looks like a tasty snack for later. Potentially, yes. If I had to guess, maybe they ride or eat those. So you may be on the right track. Mm. Uh, but n- n- neither here nor there. Not what we need. Because I'll, I'll continue on the track past that open, little open bird dinosaur hatchway. Continuing north. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when you do continue north, you see a yet another uh, alcove, uh, again, filled with more of those uh, featherless, large, ostrich-sized birds. Uh, and as you continue through here, um, the hammering does get louder and louder and louder um, the further north you go. Um... Can I hug wall above that second alcove, we, or the alcove, the, the one we just discovered? I want to hug wall and just peek around the left corner, like, real quick. If I if I even see, like, a wing or a beak, I'll just immediately not give a shit and go back. Uh, up at this very top one? Yeah, 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 that little, little... Um, sorry, that that is actually just a little... I didn't uncover that very well. That's oh. just a little, little dead end. There's none of them. All of those creatures seem to be um, mm-hmm. just located in those two deeper alcoves there. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna cross towards the north wall and kind of back to it and motion them to kind okay. of do the same. And I need everybody to go ahead and make a stealth check, but you get advantage. Yeah. So is it ten plus my normal stealth? Uh, or is it ten altogether? You get a stealth. Uh, you roll your stealth check and then you just add ten to it. Matt twenty. I got. We an get. A, so do I have to roll twice? <laughs> you said we get advantage. You get advantage. Okay. <laughs> One better. Um. So it's ten plus our stealth. Yeah. 26. Okay. okay. You continue. Uh, <clears throat> so sneaky. As you continue, um, you don't seem to have alarmed any of these beasts. Um, looking at them, they don't seem to be tethered very tightly, just kind of like like you roll up to the saloon. And Someone just drooped their horse yeah, on them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. Um, I guess we'll. Uh, Okay, we're going to sneak all along that north wall and see what's down them tracks curving off. Okay. So, you do see the end of the tracks, and you do see uh, the light uh, at the end of this tunnel. Um, so, the hammering grows louder and louder as you now approach this room. Um, how close to the edge are we going to where this room... Because this... This room is essentially opening up right here. How close to the edge are we wanting to go? The, what do you say edge? What do you mean? Like that, like, so where these walls kind of end and go north and south? Mm-hmm. How close to those, to the end of those walls are you wanting to go? Are you like a foot, I said like a foot away from the corner. Okay. As I'm, long I'm, as we don't see something in the distance with okay. our dark vision. 
So the hammering. Oh, mom handed me. So. <laughs> and and so you actually can see fairly well. Um, Thank you. This room seems to be pretty well lit. Mm -hmm. um, definitely more than than dim. Um, but the hammering's not coming from this room. Uh, this enormous uh, rectangular chamber, it seems to be like some sort of a working smelter. Um, there's a rectangular pit in the center of the room that's filled with molten iron, uh, and there are uh, devices uh, of dwarven design, actually, um, arranged around the pit, and they seem to be uh, able to to be used to siphon uh, liquid metal to kind of get the impurities out before it's uh, put into the the uh, pit there. And I'm going to uncover all of this, actually. Might as well, right? Right. Yeah. Show me everything. Okay. Oh, so um, there's a smaller pool in the southeast corner that holds what appears to be some other sort of molten something, maybe iron. Uh, and then you notice that you do see creatures uh, that look like a mix of humanoid amphibians and elemental fire, and they are tending to these machines. Uh, so far, they have not noticed you. One of them doesn't like, like look like the chief, right? Like one that have like feathers, and the rest don't. You know what I mean? No, nope, they all look pretty oh, close to that. Oh, dude, that's scary looking. <laughs> that's oh. scary. Look, he's so droopy. I don't like it. I'm not letting that get near <clears throat> me. Okay, so we see those dicking around, and we, but we don't see anyone that looks like a, a key holder, right? No. Um, no, not. They're, they don't seem like there's occasional difference between them, but there's there's no one wearing like a headdress or anything. No, yeah. like I've got a staff. I'm or like right. I mean, some of them have swords. Like there's a couple of them um, that don't have any kind of weapon at all, um, and then there's a couple that have you know just kind of basically little sticks. How um, many do we see? Uh, <laughs> I believe like eight. Oh, nine. Huh? Did you say eight or eleven? Eight or nine. Oh, I was like, I don't think we have the capability to take that out by ourselves. Uh -uh. So uh -uh. I'll, I'll start backing up down the tunnel. Okay. And going uh, loop into the where the track is. Okay. So you uh, back around. I'll pull the map back up on the screen here. You said that hammering wasn't coming from in there, right? No, it was definitely much louder uh, in there, but it wasn't was not coming from in there. No. Okay. Um, so you're heading back down to the tracks, uh, and you're going to try to take that southeast track. Yeah, take track number two. Track number two. Uh, how far in do you want to go? Because as you get closer to that, the light coming from the big area and that room you just came from kind of fades out. Um, I stop when I'm uncomfortable, which is immediately when it's super dumb. So okay. uh, I'll say that you make it probably about... Um, Probably close to 20 feet in before it just completely <coughs> goes dark. And then I, uh, I'll pat Luna on the shoulder this time. Luna, do you want to take point for a second? Yeah, this one's a little dark. Yeah, that's fine. I got you. I go forward very sneakily. Super stealth. Okay. Uh, make a, another stealth check for me. Uh, 25. Okay, good. Uh, so you continue um, to. Uh, how far are you wanting to go, or when? when are you, at what point are you wanting to stop? I definitely don't want to walk into an open room and have all of these fire things okay. attack me. So you come to the end. End of the line. Of this track, and it seems to open into uh, another smaller little pathway and. Uh, you can pretty much safely assume that this uh, also is another entrance into that larger room. Hey, the room is like right there to the left of us. Uh, yeah. The room? Yeah. What's the room? The room with all the lizard people, the fire people. Are you listening in as well, Brad? The fire nets. Oh, yeah, oh it's right here. Right there. Oh. Yeah, it's just another entrance. Um. I'll say I'm, I'm right behind her. Is it still, like, super dark right now? 
Uh, a lot less dark because now, it, basically, the end of this tunnel. Now you uh, you're pretty much on your right is the large molten lava uh, pit, and to the left is this forge. Can I do a, a hasty look around the corner and back? Mm-hmm. What do I see? Like to the you're looking, looking to the north. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you s- see, you know, still, uh, you know, maybe eight to nine newts just kind of going about their business. They seem to be trying to work the machinery in there the best they can. They are, uh, the machinery is definitely dwarven uh, by nature. You can tell that. Um, and they don't seem to be experts at it. But they're, they're busy screwing with it. So yeah. if I were to, like, press A to roll to the other terrain on the other side, they wouldn't. I could do, like, a quick roll, and they wouldn't yeah. look. They I mean, wouldn't you can make it. a stealth check. Okay. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at them and just say, wait, let's... And point to the tracks that are just right in front of us to the east. Okay. Just say just a, just a quick little okay. pass by. And okay. I'm gonna do, do, do right across. Okay. And I got a twenty-eight. That's good. Yeah. So you kind of Naruto run a little bit. No, when I press A to roll. Well, you gotta get a head start to roll, or else you're just gonna end up in the middle of the opening. <laughs> That's true. So you kind of quick Naruto roll, tuck and roll, and yes, you make it over to the other. Uh, the other side where there are more tracks. Uh, there just seems to be mine carts pretty much everywhere. Mm. Uh, or mine cart tracks, rather. Um, the area you tumbled across, so to the north is that room, to the south there's a big, large crane that basically has a big, like, steel bucket uh, on it that, uh, I mean, with your kind of knowledge of blacksmithing and things like that, you know that any kind of ore has to be heated up so more than likely they probably use this bucket and put all the ore in it lower it into the lava and then that crane is also on that track and it can pretty much roll uh, up into the large room where it can kind of pour it into those dwarven machines mm. neat um did they make it make uh, are y'all trying to go across oh i was just waiting yeah, yeah. i'll check Twenty. Damn. Dude. That's your dodge right there. Sneaky. Thirty with my modifiers. Woo! Yeah, so you all <coughs> you all uh, make it across. What a great spell. Uh, I'm assuming you just kinda like tiptoe across. Uh, I just imagine Brad just kind of <laughs> Well I, I kinda wanna try to try to mimic him. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I liked what he did. Make so. a performance check. Oh jeez. Let's see how close you get. Ten. Okay, so you you do a fairly good job. You kind of get the running start, um, and when you do the tumble, you roll kind of just short. And just as you take that tumble, one of the fire newts turns the corner, and just as he's about to see you, another fire newt makes a noise, and he kind of turns away uh, and is turned back around into the large room, and you make it across on the scene. I'll give Brad just a quick two pats on his shoulder. <laughs> and, and then I'll emotion toward down the tracks and give him a nod. <laughs> okay, so you're continuing down the tracks? Yeah. Okay, so uh, as you make your way through this winding, cavernous uh, track, um, go ahead and just cover that. It just, kinda, it just seems to keep going 30, 40 feet uh, <clears throat> until it eventually opens back up into this larger cavern and seems to circle back south. There are words. Uh, so when you cross that original uh, rail trestle, looking to the east, you saw this other bridge, and that seems to be the bridge that you're on now. So looking back west, you see the one that you came in on. Well, okay. Damn. So we're just living around, it looks like. In that case, this looks like an okay, okay place to stop for a second. Um, strategize. So... Uh, those fire newts back in that room, I see the big machines that were up there on the map. Um, was like one of them at each of those machines? Were there more in the north or more in the south? Or, <clears throat> um, were they just everywhere? Well, uh, when you saw them, um, there was a couple at the machines, but they seemed to all be kind of just walking around and doing their own thing. What I was thinking was we could use our super sneaky awesomeness to hug maybe the the northern edge of the wall and go around and maybe see if we can get to the other end of the room and find a door or something. Uh, but if they're just all over that table and stuff that was up there that we saw, I think that's a table. Um, we can't do that. So it looked like a few were coming and going up there. 
Yeah, just um, it doesn't, didn't seem like any more were coming in or any less were leaving, um, but they just seemed to be kind of going about their business. Well, we... I think we have to get through that room while those fire nits were in. Oh, and I meant to note that the hammering has gotten a little softer the further you've gone. Do you have... I, I know you're capable with a sword. Mm-hmm. Quite good with it. Do you have any ice-type spells or something? Maybe they, these things look like they may not like the cold. Anything to chill them out, maybe? I can make an ice... Uh, or not ice, but like a... Cold orb? Cold orb? Mm-hmm. You know how you do that fireball thing? Do you have a way to snap your fingers and make it like an ice blizzard of some sort instead? <laughs> no, I can... The only... I can do like necrotic damage to one thing. And it's just one. You know, normally I'm not bad at coming up with ideas, but Luna, I think we're a, a lot of what we're about to do is going to rest on your capabilities. I don't think we should fight this. I think we should trick this. I do have a disguise kit. I don't know if that'll help us any. I, um, <laughs> I'm not. No, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, well, you know, I'm just throwing out ideas. Perhaps. Maybe one of us could be bait? Ooh, here's an idea. Hmm. Maybe I cast Fireball on the lava that they're all working on. Well, I don't see that. I don't think they're immune to fire. They're probably super used to it, so it'll probably hurt them a bit. Maybe it'll splash it off. Lava's a distraction, though, maybe, and we can just... That's a very expensive description. Describe, or distraction. And we could just throw, like, three rocks towards the south, and then we might get similar yeah, I mean, results. That's <laughs> okay. I thought you were talking about coating them with magma and burning them alive, you know what I mean? But that's... I mean, that would maybe also, I don't know. What if we, like, throw a rock at those bird things and run the other way around? There's an idea, too. Those birds would be perfect. That's, that's right, but how... So we... T- t- walk me through, Brad. What happens? Step by step. Uh, grab rock from the ground. Uh, get in throwing distance of said creature things. Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Throw rock as hard as can. Hopefully, bird things get upset and make noise. Mm. We run back down and around when lizard fires walk up and over to check on bird things. I like it. And we can try to swoop around. I mean, worst case scenario, we get to kill some people. This sounds good. I like this. I like this plan. So we're in the, the uppermost alcove will throw some rocks, really piss them off good, and then we'll sprint south around, and most likely they'll come out from that upper area because that's the closest point to get to the birds. And by the time they're out there, we'll be coming from the south, we'll do whatever's there and proceed. Jeez, Brad. Love it. Thank All right. You. Everyone, find a find a fairly large rock that you That's can throw. That's easy. Everybody finds <laughs> like a, a, a baseball-sized rock at least. It's okay. easy to find. Uh, <laughs> a little large, a little large. Get get one you could maybe you know forty feet. Just okay. <laughs> Softball. We'll, we'll we'll stealth back around towards that you know upper alcove. Okay. And uh, so you're going. Uh, basically, like right here. Yes. Okay. And um, okay, just just to reiterate, I'm gonna throw these rocks inside the cavern, mm-hmm. and hopefully it makes noise enough to scare birds, <laughs> or birds make noise. Three rocks being thrown at once should definitely do it, especially if you accidentally hit one or on purpose. I don't care. So. Hang on. Hmm. Maybe. Apologies to our viewers, I've had the wrong. I didn't have the map up on the screen, so I do now. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure something. Okay. We're you, good. You got your rock? Yep, I got okay. it. Everybody on three, <clears throat> okay? One, two, 
Three. We all lob rocks. <laughs> okay. In the bird area. Uh, everybody roll a d20. And add your dexterity. Natural 20! Modify. Ooh. <laughs> Nine. 22. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so all of you uh, chunky rocks at the same time. <clears throat> um, yours goes and it, it hits one in the leg. <laughs> Uh, okay. And then kind of bounces off and, and hits one of the, the hitching posts. Both of yours actually go, one hits one in the side and another one hits one right in the ass. Uh, and they start letting out these loud screeching. <laughs> we're sprinting south the moment we threw those rocks. Okay. And as you turn, you notice most of them actually come loose from their... Uh, from their hitches. We're sneaky, they, though. <laughs> they turn around and they actually start running south down the trestle you originally came across. <clears throat> Wait, so as we're running, like, we're looping back around through the south, we look behind us, and they're going way south? Yeah. Oh. Keep going, keep going. Hey, Patriot Luke has got that. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we're the same with our plan. <laughs> okay, uh, so you run around uh, the, the bottom side uh, of the uh, area, and looking up, there's definitely... Um, a few less uh, fire nudes in there at this point. You, it's hard to get an exact count with everything that's kind of going on, but you can tell some of them, uh, most of them are actually kind of looking, you know, off in that direction, uh, and you can tell that definitely some of them have left. Uh, how many we count immediately when we like we run into the opening a little bit? Uh, you probably count uh, like six. Six? Yeah. Uh, does it look like we can get low and sneak, or we, does it look like... Possibly, but it'd be... I say we sneak in, and if we have to, we just start killing. Okay, yeah, the moment we get around that southern bend, we get low and try to sneak around towards the, the east. Okay. Uh, everybody make one more set of stealth checks for me. Natural 20 again. Awesome. Uh, 29. 29. Okay, so... You all manage to make it uh, well into the room. Where's so um, And you come upon right up uh, to a couple of fire newts without them noticing you. But that's as, no matter how good you roll, unless you turn invisible, there is no <laughs> going any further without them seeing you. So the moment the, these two are in our way, I'll, uh, I'll look at Brad and go, Oh, just. Full <laughs> sprint at him. Then when he's full sprinting, I take my bow out and rip cock an arrow. Okay. That's the other one. Everybody roll initiative. This is our surprise oh, attack. And I'm last on the initiative or the uh, uh, surprise round. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's glowing too. Oh, so crowded. Look at all of them. Yeah, we got rid of some with clever antics. <laughs> bah! Okay, you guys, let me turn on our map here. So Brad, see, you pretty much ran right up to this dude. Let me put you back. <laughs> I was at a. I walked right out in the entrance way, so like okay. right here, here. Okay, so I'll put you there. And Luna, I'll put you right there next to him. Okay. Okay, now I need to roll initiative. Uh, this battle terrain is brought to you by Dwarven Forge, the world's finest battle terrain. Okay. That and these are what I need. Uh, I don't know where my thing is. That's okay. Uh, all right, who rolled a twenty-five to twenty? Cricket, cricket. All right, uh, nineteen to fifteen. Sixteen. Hmm, okay. Probably skip the next few brackets <laughs> if I had to guess. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so 14 to 10? 11. Huh, you guys aren't that bad at all. <laughs> Five. <laughs> okay. And uh, 
Okay. So, you all will get a surprise round. Um, Sigor, you are first up. What would you like to do? Well, I'll say this. Surprise round, you guys can do this in whatever order you'd like. Okay. <clears throat> I'll say since, I mean, Brad, he's literally darting up there, I'd say he probably should go first then, right? And then, um... I see him charging that one, so I'll turn. I'll see that one kind of hanging out towards the left, and I'll just take a shot for him with a okay, some good shit. And then I'll, I'll tell you what that is after Luna tells you what she's doing. We get to divvy up our surprise around how we want. You still looking? I'm gonna do my cold orb. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm I'm sharp shooting a a planar warrior arrow at that fellow. But Brad, you can do your stuff first. Okay. Okay. I'm going to run up and attack it twice. Okay, so you get advantage. Oh, good. Twenty-six for the first attack. <clears throat> okay, that hits. Uh, natural nineteen for the that, second one. That hits. And I think that's actually a crit, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So, for the first attack, will be 10 damage. Okay. Second one, quick math, 30. 30 damage? Okay. So you come up behind this thing and just, you kind of jump up on its back a little bit because it's, they're not that super tall, but they are taller than you. Cool. So you kind of jump up on its back and shiv it in the side, and then as it kind of leans back in pain, you come across and just cut its throat, and this thing falls to the ground dead. That's perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. That's exactly what I gonna, requested. You kind of have like, oh, I'm going to look back at them. Big old smile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, all right, I'm, I'm letting it go loose my Sharpshooter, plan of warrior arrow at the left guy. Okay. Oh, do I have any advantage too? You do since it's a surprise. Yeah. Okay, cool. That is. Yeah, I rolled a nat one on my. <laughs> <laughs> well, I rolled a nat one just now, so my real roll is a two. Okay. So I, I don't know. So I, your arrow kind of goes flying in and just pins into one of these crates over here. Uh, at which point, this one turns around and notices you. This one turns and they. Pretty much all turn and notice you now at this point. The one and closest now, to us, I hurl a cold orb at. Okay. Is that the one to the left of there? Or to your straight ahead? Huh? Like, which one are you looking at? You talking about this one? Yeah. Okay. I feel like that one's kind of the closest. Maybe. You'll have to kind of step out into the opening. Oh, to... Well, then never mind. The one that's just straight ahead of me. Okay. Advantage surprise roll. <laughs> Perfect. Um, twenty-three to hit. That hits. Mm, I would like to use an empowered spell slot. Okay. Switch your point. Oh, that worked out. Okay. Um, eighteen cold damage. Okay. Very good. And that is to this one here? Yes. Okay. Cool. So uh, you said that was a ball of cold you threw? Uh-huh. So, so your uh, chrom- chromatic orb? Uh-huh. Okay, so yeah, you start spinning it. I just see Brad kind of run in and start. you start spinning your, your orb, uh, and little flicks of ice start shooting off of it, and then you release it as it goes flying, and just breaks open. All these ice shards kind of fly in the air and immediately melt as soon as they uh, go Ooh. flying off. Uh, but uh, he he definitely took the full brunt of that. <clears throat> Perfect. Um, we fit. Okay, so there's our surprise round. Sigor, you get the first. I'm going to take many more shots at this guy <laughs> and see if I can land one of them. So, same exact as last time. First arrow, here comes. I got a one. <laughs> Something's going on here right now. Okay. You rolled that one? Yeah. Okay. Too sneaky. Um, so, uh, with this one, uh, when you let your bow loose, uh, your arrow again just kind of goes sailing off, but you kind of lose grip on your bow a little bit and drop 
uh, drop it to the floor. And that will be uh, an action to pick it back up. Well, my spells are fire related. Um. Well, shit. I guess. Uh, Panic and I'll just duck back around right around the corner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and in my turn. Okay. Uh, that will bring us to the first of the fire newts uh, turns here. Um, so uh, this first one is going to run directly at you, Luna. Woo! Okay. Uh, and is going to uh, pull out a scimitar, uh, very similar to the one that you used to use. Uh, and attack you. Um, that first attack is going to be a 23 to hit. Uh, and the second one's definitely going to miss. Um, so you are going to take... 2 damage. <laughs> uh, 8 slashing damage. Okay. Uh, this one uh, sees his fallen brethren and you kind of grinning with this kind of blood uh, soaked all over your face. Uh, and you see it actually, because um, you can kind of see the the pulsing veins, almost like its skin is translucent, um, almost like it has lava for for blood, you know. Even though it probably doesn't, that's what it looks like. Um, and you see it kind of surge up, and you see it open its mouth and just whoo, spit out a uh, like flaming uh, fire of something at you. Um, and I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, 25. Okay, that succeeds. So, it does hit you, uh, but you are only going to take half damage. Okay. So, you take, uh, you're going to take four fire damage uh, as this thing just kind of spits on you, and you you try to dodge out of the way, and just part of it catches you on the shoulder. Um, That will bring us uh, back to your turn, Brad. Um, I'm going to rush at the one that spit at me. Okay. Um, and try to attack it twice by, like, thrusting my sword into it to try to make it fall into the lava. Kicking, <laughs> kicking okay. It. Uh, as you run past, this one catches you with the scimitar when you leave, and you take ten slashing damage. Um, but go ahead and roll attack. Um, and you said you're trying to push this one? Yes. You're trying to shove it? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're going to um, make an athletics check to try this. Okay. So so basically you make an athletics check, and then you make uh, an attack roll, essentially. Uh, 15. Okay, that's going to be enough to do it. Make an attack roll now. Yeah, which is just uh, d20 plus your strength. 11. Right. Okay. Um, so, you are able to actually push, and just run and push this thing, and it falls back in the lava, and you see it submerge uh, in the lava, um, but a few moments later, you see a, a hand, and another hand kind of oh, pull yeah. itself God. back that didn't work. Um, So right now, he's still in there, but... Can I still attack twice? Uh, or would that not... I, yes, you can. So if you use the attack action, you can attack twice. And you did technically attack it. So. Okay. Do I have to use the second attack on the same one? Uh, I don't think so, no. I'm going to say no for now. Okay. Then I'll kind of run back towards the one that was attacking the Okay. Other, and make my second attack on that one. Okay. Hmm. Uh... 13. So, as wait, 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 wait. Did, did he get advantage because he's flanking right now? Well, it saw him run past because it got an attack of opportunity. He knows he's there. Okay. I'm not doing technical flanking D and D rules because it's just silly. Okay. Um, but he so so he knew you were there because you ran right by him and he swung at you and hit you. Um, so uh, as you run back up, uh, he does kind of keep his eye on you, mm-hmm. uh, and he does manage to deflect your attack. Okay. comes back up. And I'll end my turn. Okay. Um, that is going to bring us uh, to these guys. Um, you know what? I actually didn't take their turn before, so uh, I messed up, so whatever. 
Um, this one is going to turn, uh, and it is going to take a step forward here. And you see it, uh, this is one of the ones without a weapon. Uh, and he kind of brings his hands together. Uh, and after a moment, you see flames start to shoot out of his Burning fingers. hands, really? Uh, and I need uh, you, uh, Brad, and Sigor to make a dexterity saving throw. Wait, me? I'm behind a wall. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Luna. My mistake. I meant to say Luna. A dexterity save. Can I tell how powerful this person is by looking at him? Not really. Okay. There, there's not really a whole lot <clears throat> to look at. 26. Big gross droopy fire, man. 26. Mm-hmm. Do we get to attempt to dex, right? Wait, for what? Dexterity saving throw since no. I'm sneaky? No. No, the sneaking's done. <laughs> dexterity saving throw 16. Uh, that is going to succeed as well. Um, so, um, you and will take uh, six fire damage. Okay. okay. Um, then, this one is going to, uh, let's see, what does he want to do? Let's see what, this one is going to hold his turn. Uh, and that is going to bring us to uh, Luna. The one in front of me, if I were to attack it with a ranged spell, I would probably have disadvantage, right? Yes, since you're within five feet. Okay. Well, then the one that is behind it, um, I will attack that mm-hmm. one. Okay. With a third level chromatic orb. Oh. So my first roll would be a um, 14. Does that hit? If not, I'm going to use my advantage from earlier. Uh, that does not hit. Okay. Um, I'll take my 14 and I will burn two sorcerer points. <laughs> okay. Or do I want to, let's, do I want to spice things up? And I can get a third advantage. Let's spice things up and I'll get a third advantage. I'm going to do uh, wild magic and okay. I'm going to say, we're going to reroll this again. And it. if not, I'm going to still use my d4. All right. Perfect. Okay. 20. That is. Okay. Let me put a little tally mark there. Tides of chaos. Jamie Mar- Marlboro, two um, d8s. D8s? Uh-huh. Here's a d8, and here's a d8. And we're going to burn um, another sorcerer point for empowered spell. There's all this weird sorcerer stuff. <laughs> There's all this magic stuff. Ooh, damn. That was really good. Okay, um, so let's see. 24, 28... 35 okay. cold damage so same thing as before you spin up your ice circle launch it uh, and as it does it kind of coats this thing in ice and this time not melting and you just see it crack 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 and this thing just uh, falls to pieces I already did that okay hey chill out <laughs> If I take a step back, would um, would it have an opportunity attack against me? You can try. Well, yes, it would have an opportunity. So you can try and step back if you want. Is that the end of your turn, man? Um... Yeah, that'll be the end of my turn. I couldn't miss you so far as I wanted to, so yeah. Okay. So, that brings us back to Sigor. Uh, <clears throat> um. Could I stab an arrow into the ground and use my he- uh, healing arrow? Yeah. And I think 
I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna take an arrow out of my quiver, run up, and uh. Your big ass arrow. Yes, this is just kind of making. It's tight quarters. Um, can I stab the ground with this arrow and then pick my bow up with the other hand? Yes. Okay. So I will stab my little arrow. I'm gonna stab it actually right in front of me in this, in this gentleman's space. Okay. And use the uh. What's that it's called here? Healing Spirit. I'll just call it Healing Arrow. I'm going to put the Healing Arrow there, so you two are currently inside of it. Or you should be, if it's the nine spaces now. And both of you get to heal for... Well, they heal at the start of their turn. Yep. That yeah. is cool. But you can go ahead and roll for how much how much it is. Um, I'm going to check it real quick. It's first time they enter it or start their turn, so that'd be on their turn, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um... So I guess technically they would, it would heal them immediately. I mean, they, when they start their turn, they'll be there. Right, right, right. I, I'm done either way because I don't want to move out of this dude's range. Okay. But yeah, we'll just wait till the start of your turn. For, for... Okay. Does that, that end your turn? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so this uh, warrior, seeing that, is going to turn to you uh, and take uh, a slash at you. And it is also going to attempt to slash at your arrow that you just put in the ground. Oh. Right at its feet. What a jerk. No, oh, try hard, lizard. <laughs> it's going to miss you. And it's going to miss uh, your arrow as well. So, as it slashes at you, you kind of dodge out of the way, and it tries to follow up with a. a to cut the arrow in half, but you manage to reach down with your bow and actually deflect it from hitting your arrow. Um, then 30 is going to run up and attack you, Brad. And he's going to run up there. Okay, so he's going to have two attacks against you. Would I know if I did it? First one is a nat 20. Oh, yay. Uh, <clears throat> would it just not uh, The second one's going to... Oh, well, I don't know if it's... I would assume uh, that is a... Your character saw, like, one of them go swimming in lava. No. That fire like 15 to hit. Uh, we'll have I'd to say it's tie. Yeah. Uh, it's like if it, my spells. If I tie, then then it doesn't hit. Then it, so yeah. one, Okay, so one crit. Um, so you're going to take, so as this thing runs up, it kind of catches you off guard um, and just slices across your back. Uh, and that's going to be uh, 23 damage, slashing damage. Is it? It's too late. Never mind. Yes. <laughs> How much damage did you just take? 23. Jeez. Um, the other one here. Let's see. Um, nope, he's too far away, so that's going to be it. Uh, Brad, that brings us to your turn. Okay. Um, I would like to use... You heal for one, Brad. I heal for one, thanks. You heal for one. That helps a lot. <laughs> um, as my bonus action, I'm going to use second wind. <laughs> okay. uh, and get me a little health real quick. Feeling a little bit better. Let's see. Not much. Uh, nine. It's something. It's something. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, turn around and attack the one that came up and okay. hit me in the back twice. Six or nine? That's six. Um, 20 plus. That hits. And then 26 for that. That hits as well. Ladies, straight Nine. Okay. And 11. So 20 damage. Very good. Uh, so as this thing has just finished taking a slice at you, you come right back with it and slice it twice against uh, right, uh, right across its like belly, pretty much. And you see kind of this red, gooey substance kind of spilling out of it. Definitely looks very injured. Good. Yes. Um, and that will end my turn. Okay. Um, that will bring us to these guys. 
this one is going to pop up here and is going to, uh, let's say, um, he's going to look at you, uh, Sigor, and um, actually, you know what? No, he's not going to do that. He's actually going to go back this way. Okay, and then this one. Oh, no, he already took his turn. All right, that ends that turn, I believe. Um, but you do see this one kind of start to cast something in its hands uh, and kind of put his hands on the guy he ran up next to. Um, not quite sure what that was, but uh, he did it. All right. <laughs> So, that is going to bring us uh, back to the Luna. Okay. I would like to cast Chill Touch on the one that's right in front of me. Okay. Um, chill Touch, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um... Well, it's right in front of me, so I can't without it being disadvantage, right? Uh, that's correct. Oh, fuck. That's why you need shower lay. Isn't, isn't melee. chill touch, uh, I thought chill touch was, oh, it's not melee, is it? It's, it's a, a ghostly skeletal hand. skeletal hand. Can it come from behind him, then? Um, read me the spell. Okay. You don't have to, okay. You create a ghostly <laughs> skeletal hand in the space of a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack against the creature to assail it with a chill from a uh, chill of the grave. On a hit, the target takes okay. one D. So, it, yeah, it is a ranged spell attack then, so yeah, you would have disadvantage. So it's within, okay, what? Okay. Poison spray then. Just okay. kidding. Um, I extend my hand towards it right in its face and I <laughs> cast um, some gas out of my palm. It has to make a, a constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, it succeeds. Can I know what it rolled? A natural 20. I feel like I need a, a camera on my dice so people know I'm not over here horse shit. Well. I'm willing to let anybody look at dice whenever. It still takes half the damage, right? It still takes half damage, yeah. Or wait. It might not. And just fails. And poison spray's cantrip. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's probably, just probably no nothing. damage. It just does nothing. It, so you actually do manage to get this poison spray off, uh, but this thing, like, it's very amphibian. So it looks like half humanoid, half amphibian, almost without a spine, kind of just leans back Matrix style. <laughs> and you just see the fart cloud just go over its, over its head. I need to get rid of this thing in my face. <laughs> uh, does that end your turn? Did you also heal? At the beginning of your turn with uh, the know. Healy era? I got a one, right? Mm hmm. Oh, it hit for, I guess that makes sense, yeah. It healed for the same amount. Um. Also, you can, you can uh, as a bonus action, you can re roll it uh, at the beginning of your, or on your turn. Oh, to change the number? Yeah. Well, if, at the beginning of every turn, the number would be different. It wouldn't be like, it wouldn't pulse one every time, no matter what. Right. It'd be like, if someone was going through it, like, when oh, they right, right, yeah. roll, exit, and okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so each time you run, run to your turn, um, you roll. Okay. Question to see if I could do this. So I w would like to try, if possible, to do Misty Step 30 feet away. Okay. I'm wanting to go essentially to the entryway over there. Over there? Mm -hmm. How many feet is that? I can't tell from where I'm at. It's like right at the corner of that white. Yeah, you can spot. make it about. So right if I there. were to disappear, uh -huh. and then I'm sneaky right now, could I then, with my movement, run the rest of the way to the corner without them seeing me? Uh, I mean, they they know you're there. But I'm missing stepping. Point. I'm disappearing. They're all looking this way. We're all over here. You can make a stealth check uh, as an action. I already did an action. Oh, well, then you can miss these steps. <laughs> you can miss a step and run. See? Yeah. <laughs> That's always an option, too. And when you hide around the corner, they for sure won't see you. They'll have to be like, Ooh, I'll just stay back there. where I'm at with my friends. You sure? I'm positive. Don't sound so sad. I'm too late. Okay. Well, 
Anyways, uh, does that end your turn? Yeah. Cigar. Um, Cigar. Hell home. Got a sharpshooter, planar warrior, some arrows, and old magic hands back over there with his buddy. Back here? Okay. Yeah. Arrow number one. For sure, not a one. It's pretty fucking low still, but... Uh, that's gonna be a, a nine on arrow with the first arrow. Alright, arrow number two. That's a little bit better. Uh, Fourteen? Uh, I've done nothing this whole fucking fight. Oh, oh Brad knows. <laughs> You'll okay. be hearing about that later. Um, I get a little... I get, Pretty damn worried as I reached my quiver and took out that that second arrow on fire because I'm feeling very little pieces of wood in my back now. <laughs> okay. So I'll uh, I got a bonus action I can do. Oh no, no, I don't. Planar warrior is my bonus action. Um, okay. I look at this guy in my face and hope he's dealt with. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of, uh, he's gonna take a swing at you again. He's still mad from the last time when he missed. He's actually ignoring the arrow at this point. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a 15 on the first roll. Oh, it barely hits. And a 10 on the second. So you're going get, to get hit once. Uh, that's going to be 8 damage that he slices uh, through you. Um, this one is going to take another swing. Uh, this other one's going to take another swing at you. Yay. Uh, that's definitely going to miss. Uh, however, this one is going to come swing at Sigor again. Oh, it's a crowd. It is a crowd. Okay. Um, so, uh, my first roll was a nat 1. Uh, the second roll hits, but... I'm going to say the nat 1 caused him to drop his weapon, and he uses his extra action to pick it back up, and now he's pretty much fumbled right in your face. Hey, buddy. Uh, that is... Me too. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, it's like, you, you know, in a different world, right? Let's just talk this out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that does bring us back to Brad, though. Um, I'd like to imagine after I cut up the one in front of me, uh -huh. I whip back around to cut up the one right in front of Luna again. Okay. So I'm going to attempt to attack twice on that one. Okay. And I will say you will have advantage on this one now because he is actively engaged uh, with Sigor. Good. Good. Non nat 20 for the first All right. round. Yeah. Wait for it. And. 21 for the second one. That, that hits. Is that. With 21 after your modifiers? Correct. Okay, yeah, Correct. so they both hit. Uh, 11 plus 12. So 23. Okay. Uh, and that was the one in front of Luna? Correct. Okay, so same thing. You thought your first move was so cool that you actually do it again. You jump <laughs> on his back and shit him and then slice his throat and this thing just collapses uh, on the floor and is no more. Can Let's I, go to the can I wipe his blood on me and look back at his buddy? Yes. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'll say uh, make an intimidation check. <laughs> 17. Okay. Uh, if he, I'll say as of right now, he is frightened of you. Good. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's going to bring us to uh, these two. Um, this one is going to take a step to the side here, uh, and they're essentially looking at each other, and you see this other one now cast something on the other one, uh, and they both uh, turn to this molten pit of lava, uh, and begin channeling something into the lava. Counterspell! Uh, it's not necessarily something you can, can... It's not like an actual spell that they're casting. I'm never going to use that! <laughs> um, We're probably magic people. Yeah, there hasn't been a whole lot of magic people. Um, I was ready! I was ready with ready. it! 
Uh, but that's going to be both of their turns. Um, okay. So that's all they're going to do. That brings us back to Sigor. Um, I'm not going to sharpshoot anymore because I'm fucking tired of missing. So I'm going to line up at one of the channel boys again. Uh, preferably the uh, the one still near the pillar. Okay. And I'm going to fire two more arrows. Okay. Which is all the ones on my back at the moment. Oh. And hopefully they hit. Okay, first one's a nat one. <laughs> Gee, I got all of these d20s. This is out for the night. We're putting it up. Let me put these Go over on. here in case you seal, want to. Seal away and banish. <laughs> What happens to me? Uh, okay, so on on this nat one, um, Brad, I need you to make a dexterity saving oh, throw. Geez. These things are starting to compound here. Nat 20. Okay, so <laughs> your, 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 <laughs> your arrow goes wild, uh, and you just, by a complete accident, uh, managed to kind of start trying to dance in front of this this little guy doing an intimidation, uh, and it just goes whoosh and whizzes and just goes straight uh, into the wood uh, area of that door frame, the large door frame. Can I stop dancing and like look back and go, what the hell? You just see my hands trembling. <laughs> it's like I'm really scared right now. So. <laughs> can I can I fire my second shot at the dude? Absolutely. All right. Oh, which D20 we're going to use? This guy. this guy used to be pretty good. Alright, I'll take that, because that's going to be an 18. Got him. I hit him. I hit him. Got him. I did it. He's on the board, ladies and gentlemen. And this one's going to do... 16 piercing damage. Alright. To which one? The one near the pillar. Okay. Does that stop him from his shenanigans? Or is it making Let's him... find out. Yeah! <laughs> Find out next week on Dungeon Team. I said, but I still have arrows, but they're on my hip now. It does not interfere with what he's doing. <sighs> okay. Um. Oh, I can move around now. Yes, you can. Oh, th- there's one right in front of me. What yeah. the fuck? I never. He was perfectly <laughs> one of the side of my <laughs> Shit. Um. Okay. I'll. uh... I'll chill. I'll just chill in front of this guy now. I was going to move it, but Can it's magnetic, mm-hmm. so what I didn't want to move it. <laughs> I want to explode the whole map here. I mean, you no, but you got no reason to assume it wouldn't. Okay. They, they don't look like undead. You see their veins, a little pulsy blood and shit. Would your Vero have healed me on my turn? Oh, yeah, yes. it would. It would have healed you for three. Okay. Just take it on up. Moving on up. Does that end your turn? Oh, cycle? and it would have healed me for... Uh, I guess I'll, the three will count. Yep. That ends my turn. Uh, and I think that would have also healed Loon, right? It's not my turn yet. I haven't went but this time. Did you heal when you took your turn? Oh, oh you haven't I gone haven't yet. gone yet. You should have gotten her second. I okay. only rolled well, a four now, or a five. Okay. Um, I'm low man on the totem pole. <laughs> well, I think I may have accidentally skipped you then, so it's I your turn. So too. You heal for three. Gonna say anything. You heal for three. <laughs> <laughs> Just, turn, just call a spell, just so breathe it, in. Just put a little, is it my turn now? Yeah. Huh? Is it my turn now? It is your turn, yeah. Okay, so seeing these people doing this magical thing, I'm feeling a little bit concerned about them instead of the one that's right in front of me. So, how many feet are they away from me? Can we tell? Uh, yes, we can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, about 40 feet. Fuck. <laughs> It's not what I wanted to hear. Okay, let me move my legs so I can come up closer because I'm going to have to move them. Okay. So if I go past this one, it'll get an opportunity against me, right? Yes. Perfect. Hey, all the ones that decided to fight in the little corridor. Don't blame me for opportunity attacks. Okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to do a bonus action first. Okay. I'm going to misty stuff, so I don't get any attacks of opportunity. Okay. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm going to go here. Okay. So uh, you see out of the corner of your eyes, Sigor, uh, Luna just disappear into a fine mist of black smoke and then reappear out here. I'll say a fast prayer to some random god when I see her appear in the middle of the room. 
Dendar. Five, 10, 15. 30, right? That's 30? Which one did you, I'm gonna attack that one. Okay. I need it to make a constitution saving throw. It can certainly do that. Uh, it rolled a 19. <laughs> I'm gonna try this this time. I'm gonna burn two sorcerer points. Okay. And I'm gonna hope that I get a four here. And I got a three. Fuck. <laughs> so if it's 16 and 16, that automatically wins. Uh, I needed to beat a 16, it rolled a 16. Oh, uh, yes, then it succeeds. Yeah. Even if I something like that happens, if I roll a 16 yeah. and the DC was a 16, I win? Yeah. I thought oh, I failed. There goes that. Um, do you want to roll or do you want me to? Um, because you're feeling pretty, pretty magic-y Magical. right now. You can roll. Okay. I'll tell you I'll what. roll mine also. My damage, because you still get damage. It's just half as much. But, you know what? We're going to do a whole nother sorcerer point to make it empowered. We're just burning all of them. Um, where's my other one? Jamie, how many D8s you got? I got one D8. I got two D8s. I'm pretty sure I have all the D8s. There's this one. Three D8s. That's all the D8s I got. I need one. He's got a D8. And we'll just re-roll one. Or do you have a D8? I need eight. A D8. Or you can just roll that and roll extra D8 so I don't have to throw a dice at it. Not throw one. Or a die. I missed. These are all terrible. It's too many numbers. That's a lot of numbers. Too many numbers. We'll keep these. We'll keep that. There's a dog. Please don't hit the microphone. It's dangerous like close. <laughs> okay. Ladybug, go lay down. <laughs> she saunters off. And she just slunk between us. <laughs> 20. 32. I'm going to get you a calculator. 32. 20 necrotic damage. That okay. is with the half. It would so have did, been 40. You did blight. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that kind of dark energy kind of fills. You, none of you can really see it at this uh, angle, but your eyes turn black, uh, and you can almost sense the soul inside of this creature, and you just start squeezing it. Uh, and you feel it, or you hear it screech out in pain, but it still maintains its concentration. Um, with my movement, I want to move um, 30 feet back, hopefully, into the back passage. And like duck behind like y'all can't as, see me. As far as you can go. Okay. Um we hand this to Jonathan. What did I roll? What happens to me after I set this off? So when you set off that off, you start feeling this uncontrollable magic surge through you. Uh, and uh, after a few moments of, of twitching and kind of uh, almost going into a little bit of a seizure, uh, you heal for fourteen. Yes! That was such a good one! <laughs> magic is so weird. Magic. You said heal for uh, 14. I'm at max health again. Alright, so go be. I'm up. You're up. Um, I'm still hurt, so. Yeah, Ooh. six! He heals. Sweet. Uh, hey, this motherfucker right in front of me still, what is he doing? I'm gonna... <laughs> just gonna unsheath my silver dagger and start chopping. Okay. We're, we're, in, we're in survivor mode now. Using whatever we can. Uh, swing number one. is gonna be an 18. Uh, to swing. That hits. Alright, and that's gonna be... Use this D4. Five slashing damage. To the one right in front of you? Yeah, followed up by uh, 21 to hit. That hits. Plus another, ooh. Uh, this one's gonna be eight slashing damage. Okay, you cut through this thing. Uh, you actually what? remove one of its arms. Ooh. Uh, and as it's kind of looking down, you follow up and just slash it across the face. 
and it falls over dead. I look very surprised. <laughs> Sheath my dagger back up. And I'll, you chose uh, the wrong weapon. I, maybe. <laughs> I'll, uh... Shit. Oh, I gotta think fast. Um, fire, fire people. Um, can I use a bonus action to think of what fire newt folks are really, like, something that's important to them, maybe? Uh... Not off the top of your head. You could use um, you could use an action to uh, investigate. No, but... I don't have any actions. I want to get their attention to make them stop doing that lava shit. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna <laughs> ten, fifteen, twenty. Um, can I go right here? Yes. Twenty-five. I guess I'll just run up right here, and I'll just I'll still have both. <laughs> Do you not see what you're doing here? Stop! This is ridiculous! <laughs> just, just, just hold on! And, and just stare at him. Okay! <laughs> uh, they seem, at the moment, relatively unfazed okay. by you. That's understandable. Uh, this one uh, is still afraid of you, but is going to kind of, on the backs of his feet, uh, essentially try and take a swipe at you, but he will have disadvantage. And he rolled a nine, so that's going to be a big miss. Uh, and he still looks uh, slightly afraid of you. Um, and yeah, that's all of them. Uh, so that's going to bring us to your turn, Brad. I'm going to chop him up. Chop, <laughs> chop his ass. I'm going to chop him up. Take him to the barber. Do I get advantage because he's intimidated or no? I don't know. I don't actually I don't know how it works. Say again. Do I get advantage because he's intimidated? Or? Yes, you do get advantages. Uh, also, uh, to Luna and Brad, uh, Cadet Amberlin says good luck. No. Yay! Brad, you Thanks, for Amberlin. Oh, no, you heal for six. That's right. You know about the roll I did I'm there. not there anymore. No, you don't get to heal anymore. You ran off. 14 for the first one? Uh, that is going to miss. That <laughs> 20 for All right. Second. Death. So he's Death. still kind of stumbling back on that first hit as you go to slice and, and you just miss. But the second one, you just come at him aggressively and... Uh, 26. Death. You come... You jump in the air and just cleave straight down this thing's neck and basically split it, split it in twain almost down to its collarbone. Uh, and this thing uh, just completely falls limp and is removed. Well then. <laughs> you go for six. Uh, you go for, <laughs> for six. Okay. Uh, I guess I should have put something there. I'm gonna go ahead and move up. There. Sleeping Quill says good luck, Brad. Well, <laughs> thank you. Just make it a six. Yeah. And then I'm going to end my turn. Okay. Uh... So oh, it's Luna's turn, because last time you skipped her. I feel like you just won. No, you did. I, I skipped you last time, but I had you go after Jamie to make up for okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, these two uh, are channeling further into this pit of, of molten uh, lava, essentially. And uh, you notice this uh, more than really anybody else right now, Sigor, um, you see as their hands are extending uh, that they start to burn. These creatures of fire uh, actually start to burn and incinerate, uh, and their, their limbs actually just start completely disintegrating and disappearing, uh, and they're, they start to actually catch on fire. Uh, and at the same time, the lava bloop, 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 starts to bubble. Uh, and eventually, uh, these two uh, casters right here just <gasps> incinerate into flame uh, and bursting out of the lava. Uh, it almost, the lava almost takes form in and of itself. And standing before you, Ragnaros, is an extremely <laughs> large creature that seems to be completely made of fire and lava and flame. Mm. And I'm going to roll initiative for it. Uh, what, what was your initiative roll, do you remember? 16. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, so it is actually going to go first. Um, so uh, the first thing. Is there a dog over here? No. Okay. I thought I was getting attacked by a dog. All right. So the first thing this thing is going to do uh, is, uh, well, the first thing you notice actually is when it bursts uh, out, the room is completely illuminated now. I mean, this thing is emitting extremely bright light. Um, it actually blows these pillars uh, completely down on the ground with the force that it comes out with. And it reaches out and is going to try and slam down on you, Sigor. I hate it. <laughs> this is how I die. Just like that. Uh, but <laughs> you manage to dodge out of the way <laughs> just barely and just fire and lava and flame kind of Did he explode. dodge to the left? Um, he just dodged. <laughs> Went between his fingers. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> Um, so, uh, the, the next thing he does, though, is he turns and looks at you, uh, Brad, and kind of rise, raises his hand up, and you notice out of the cracks of this, lava and fire start to erupt up. Uh, make, make a dexterity save. Natural one. Okay. So, you uh, are going to take four damage as a plume of flame erupts out of the ground and is just sitting there, just erupting into the sky. Um, and that will bring us to Sigor. Um, huh. Uh... This guy look like if he were to lean forward and slap, he'd cover like 20 feet or something. Like what's, uh, he's pretty big. Um, if I wanted to take the disengage action, when would it be like? When would I be disengaged? Uh, so even though he's really big, it doesn't seem like he has an abnormally long reach. Mm -hmm. So he would probably have to be fairly close to you to actually hit you with a melee attack. Okay, cool. In that case, I will take the disengage action. And move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and duck and cover around the corner. Of the <laughs> and take a few deep breaths. Okay. And assess how to deal with this thing. Okay. And uh, that is going to be the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, then that brings us to Brad. I think you skipped me again. Because Brad's went twice now since I went. It's okay, though. I think you're right. I'm sorry. Oh, got him. You keep, you keep asking. You keep telling me, and it's throwing me off. I'm sorry. I'm a terrible DM. <laughs> I'm going to move closer to uh, the healing arrow. Okay. <laughs> 20, 25, 30. And you will actually heal from stepping into that. Okay. This will be a fresh one. You heal for three. Come cool. Come um, and then I will... I guess shoot an arrow at it. Okay. See how it goes. Uh, 25. That hits. Ten damage. Okay. So you shoot this arrow and you find just it seems like a, maybe a weak spot or something in its neck or head area. And as it goes in, you see this lava and flame kind of erupt out the back, and you hear as it kind of whips its head around or what it's probably its head uh, <laughs> toward you. Is do I know Sigur's around the corner? Uh, yes. Yeah, you saw him run around there. That's how you hit an arrow. <laughs> and then I'm going to end my turn with that. Okay. Hear, hearing that. Oh, yes. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Luna. Um, I cast Chromatic Orb as a third level spell. Okay. Uh, 21 to hit. That hits. Quick 
quick math. What does a star mean? That's uh, an 8 for that. So it's like a crit for their D8. Uh, 24, 27, 28. Okay. Cold damage. 28 cold damage. Very good. Uh, so as you spin up your uh, chromatic orb and launch this icy ball at this creature, uh, the area that it hits kind of freezes over just for a moment before it melts again. Um, but just before it melts, it kind of breaks free of it. Uh, but it definitely suffered some damage. Is that in your turn? Yep. Okay. Uh, that brings us to it. Uh, so you see this kind of amorphous flame creature uh, actually kind of sink down into the lava. Um, Brad and uh, Luna, you see this. Uh, and then you see it rise up out of a crack right here uh, and stand right here beside you. Uh, it's Great. Going, and it is going to uh, attempt to uh, slam down at you. Um, it's going to miss the first one. Good. And it's going to miss the second one as you dodge back and forth uh, and avoid both of this thing's attacks. Um, looking around the corner, though, it does see you. And again, you see it raise its hand. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, now one. <laughs> okay. Does that mean he takes double damage? No, he does not take double damage. How have I rolled so many motherfucking ones in one night? Uh, You're going to take nine fire damage as a pillar of flame erupts uh, right underneath your feet and forces you back out into the open there. Um, That's going to end its turn. And that brings us to you, Sigor. Am I in its range again? Uh, At the moment... Uh, yes. Okay. I just want to shoot a motherfucking arrow, so I'm going to Misty Step. Okay. Uh, which will be the last one of those. Well, actually, starting my turn. Five health is coming back. And now, Misty Stepping. Over in this open area. Okay. And I am going to sharpshooter and arrow at this guy. Uh, 13. That barely hits. Oh, wow. Okay. It's a big thing. He's not that hard to hit. Very large guy. Um, That'll be 18 piercing damage. Very good. Oh, actually, I take it back, I take it back, because there's two things I didn't add. Because I don't have any regular arrows, so that had to be one of my good arrows. Okay. So instead of 18, that'll be 19, 20, 21 piercing damage. Okay. And is that, um, is that with, like, a force arrow, or? No, okay. All right, my bonus action was just a messy stuff. Okay. So this arrow goes through, and you see it. Uh, as it gets close, the arrow actually catches on fire in the air, but it still is moving fast enough that it pierces through it. You see a hole blast through it for just a moment before it coalesces back. Um, you're not sure if the arrow came out the other side or went back in, but it did uh, kind of yell out, growl, as it uh, took the impact. All right, now it's going to be the end of Wait, I still have movement, don't I? You do. Um, I'm going to spend the rest of my turn running around this room. <laughs> Over near this table and pillar. Okay. Now I'm good. Awesome. Uh, that brings us to Brad. I'm going to take two swipes at this thing. Okay. With uh, the dragon killer? Yeah. Non nat 20. Okay. 19. Non nat 19. Uh, they both hit. Fourteen and fourteen. Okay, twenty-eight total. Okay, so as you go and take chunks out of this, you notice that that it's now starting to leak uh, lava out from these slash wounds and these arrow wounds. 
um, and these, this area where uh, uh, the, the coal, the ball of coal that hit him, he's now kind of seeping out onto the floor, and he just kind of lets out a low grumble. Doesn't say anything really audible, um, but just seems to be not feeling super great. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to use Nimble Escape. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brad, you heal for five first. Five, ten... 15, 20, just kind of hang out right there. Yeah, and as you run, he tries to take a swipe at you. Uh, but, of course, misses. Uh, and in the crossfire, does destroy this arrow. I got the heal got off? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you started your turn there. So. Okay. Does that end your turn? Uh, yes, sir? That does end my turn. Okay. Then that is going to bring us to the one and only Luna. I'm not going to skip you this time. Thanks. Um, I want to cast Cold Chromatic Orb as a second level spell. Okay. What's the range on it? 90 feet. Okay. Yeah, you'll probably have to just step, just take a step forward here. Bloop. Okay. To do it. Um, would have been a 12, but can I do my, um, Tides of Chaos since I... Was it rolled yeah. on the wild yeah, magic? Yeah, you get it back. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's go for it again. Of course, it's the same thing. Um, <laughs> I'm not satisfied, though, so it would have been a 12, but I know that a 13 hit, so I'm going to do my last bend magic, because no matter what, I'm guaranteed to succeed. Okay, we'll go ahead and roll damage, then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just almost out of spell slot, so every spell counts. Where am I? Every spell counts. Seven. What is She's this? Doing, I can't uh, tell. Is that math. a two? Thank you again, everybody who's here watching. And join us. Hope everybody's having a good night. Thirteen cold damage. They're certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen cold. Yeah. All right. Uh, so again, you shoot this ball of freezing, freezing ice, and actually more of it is is covered in ice this time before it manages to break itself free. Um, but it still stands. Um, that is going to bring us to its turn. Um, so uh, it is uh, first going to um, with its. Deceptively quick, actually. Uh, move right here. Um, it is going to look at Luna and raise. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Raise its hand back up in the air again. Is it doing a spell? Um, yeah. Counter spell. Okay. So as it's raising its hand up, it kind of looks at you and then looks at his hand. I don't like it. <laughs> Nothing happens. Okay. And then uh, it's going to look back at you again, uh, Sigor, uh, and actually, instead of raising its hand, push uh, forward with its hand and launch a fire, uh, a fiery projectile at you. Um, and that is going to be an 18 to hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, that is going to be uh, 11 fire damage. Uh, and then it's going to turn and try and slam down on you, Brad. Uh, and that is going to be a 17 to hit. Yep. Okay. Uh, and so you are going to take... 8 fire damage as it crashes down on top of you, but you manage to kind of seat between some of the fingers that kind of come down, but it does manage to catch you. Uh, and that is going to end its turn. Sigor. All right. I'm going to reach in my side quiver again and pull out one of my good ones. Probably two of them. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm going to mark off a piece of two. <laughs> And I will bonus action planar warrior to make him glow with spatial magic as I'm sharpshooting uh, my first arrow towards Okay. Oh, there we go. 24 for the first arrow. That hits. Um, should I go ahead and make a second attack? Yeah, I'm going to make a second attack too. We'll say... Well, I don't know about this one. It's fine. That's oh, 13. Okay. Roll damage for your uh, attacks. The 
the first arrow is 27. How do you want to do this? <laughs> um, I really just want to, I just want to put a hole in this thing's core. Okay. Like just right through them. I just want a big old circle to... Okay. So as you take your arrow and line up this shot and it goes streaking through the air and the further it goes, you start to see the fire engulf it as it's getting closer, but then that fire is overcome with that teal energy as the arrow, the arrow just becomes pure energy and just goes right into the heart of this thing. And when it does, it lets out this large kind of forceful explosion as the top half of this thing just kind of goes showering down everywhere. Um, I need you and Luna to make a dexterity <laughs> saving throw as this thing uh, explodes. 18. Okay. Four. You manage to dive back behind this door as it's exploding. You, it was a really easy one to make. Uh, and this thing just doesn't necessarily crumble, but kind of melts and just seeps down into the floor and warps back into this lava and is no more. And for the time being, we seem to be out of initiative. <sighs> I'll take a deep breath and look around the room. There's, there's none of my arrows laying around now, are there? No, but make a perception check. <laughs> All right. Uh... Eight. Uh, there does seem to be about uh, 15 arrows uh, laying around that have been forged here. I will hastily gather them up and put them in my regular quiver on my back. Is there any way to like change how a bolt is to make it a regular oh. arrow? Bolts are shorter than arrows. Yeah. Yeah. Like, That's for here, I'm saying. Ooh, like, ladybug. Is there like a, do I see like where the things were starting to be made and like, oh, I can put this thing in there and like add some more and like, boom. Um, unless you have, have like Smith's tools and really know kind of how to do that type of stuff, probably not. I have 20 bolts that are useless to me. I'm just trying to give them to Sigour and make them do something. I walk back in, into the middle of the room. Well, Brad, you were amazing out there. Well, someone had to be. Indeed. I had no idea I had an innate fear of fire newts, but it's good to know now. Because I was not confident that entire time. Luna, you okay over there? I mean, I'm completely fine. I just don't like the fact that we're fighting fire things and, you know, I kind of do a lot of fire stuff, so <laughs> kind of fucked me. Should uh, probably spread your repertoire a little bit. Maybe get some, I don't know, you do some weird thing where you put darkness on them. I don't know, maybe more of that. We know. could just avoid fire nudes. <laughs> you could, Brad. Yeah, Brad. You very well could. Well, we came here with a reason, and uh, sneakiness be damned, right? Because I'll be, as I'm going to look around the room, is there another door or something somewhere? There is. There is actually a door uh, right here that seems to lead back to I'm feeling pretty tired, just so y'all know. Like, I'm fine physically, but, like, mentally, I'm pretty spent. That's, I'm glad you told us, but I'm afraid it, are you suggesting we rest? I mean, if y'all want to keep going, we'll just try our best. It sounds like you're suggesting we should rest. Let well, me... We can keep going. I could use a power nap. Uh... You know, as, as ideal as it would be to lay camp now or go back and meet with Logan and Patron and, and come back later, I would assume that the amount of noise and fighting we just made probably alerted, and I motioned my head towards the door, whatever the hell's in there. So if we waste any time, there's a chance it'll be way worse later. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, saying this, right? Continue on, we shall go. Oh, I mean, I'm always down to kill people. You know what? Let's use that bloodlust. Brad, <laughs> go threaten through that door, whatever's in there. Just yell at them they're going to die if they don't surrender. Yes, sir. Mm. I'm going to go towards the door. Okay. You do just that. Oh, tell them what we did here. Tell them we let them bring out the big fire thing. <laughs> so, when you march through this door... Can I take a quick 30 second to refill my drink? Go for it. By 30 uh, seconds, I mean when you march through this door, and we're actually about to take a, a, a little break here so we can uh, all refill our drinks. This looks so cool. <laughs> the floating it? lights and stuff, yeah. Dwarven Forge, ladies and gentlemen. Dwarven Forge. Very cool. I'm going to kind of re 
you aim hard. Aim right here. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you walk into this room, uh, and there doesn't seem to be anybody uh, in here. Um, now, this this room, uh, in particular, uh, seems to be in pretty good condition um, here. Uh, the main thing you notice uh, right off the bat is there's a few kind of weapons laying around. Um, there's a few suits of uh, dwarven armor that are still on kind of... Um, they're a little rusted, but still in okay condition on basically busts of dwarves. Um, and uh, really not much else going on in here aside from just kind of a stockpile of weapons and and dwarven armor. Well, there's nothing much in here, but there is another door. I thought for sure there'd be someone in here. I walk in behind him, and I guess I, I see armor and weapons about. Mm-hmm. And as you do, and the other thing you notice is the, the hammering is very, very loud. But it's still going on? It's still going on. Um, I guess doing a, a quick look in this weapon room, do all these look normal? Or is there like a, a dwarvish bow laying about? <laughs> Maybe another silver dagger or something? Uh, make a uh, perception. Actually, make an investigation check for me. Let us investigate this room. Oh, that's so good. Uh, 21. There does, in fact, to see, seem to be a uh, bow that sticks out to you. I'll, I'll go open. I'll, I'll examine the quality and kind of... Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, finely crafted wood uh, from end to end. Um, it is missing kind of a bow, a bow string, mm-hmm. um, but the area, the grip of it seems to be made out of some sort of very fine uh, metal. Um, something you're not quite familiar with, uh, but it's super lightweight, and when you feel it in your hands, very, very strong. Huh. Do we have that bag with us? The one that we can... You put things in it? Mm, things? I think Lucan. Lucan's got it. it. Damn. Well, I'll take my current ball off my back, and I'll, I'll put this new one without a string. I'll kind of try to somehow make it hang there. <laughs> okay. And I'll just keep the other one in my hand for now. Okay. Um, and I'll say, if there's, there, now's the time to pick out something in here if you find something worth well. You especially. I notice you're up in things' faces more often. Perhaps you need a, a pointy thing to deal with it sometimes, yeah? Is there anything I see that I didn't like? Most of the weapons in here seem to be like axes, um, bows, hammers, stuff like that. No, it doesn't really look like anything for me. Not at all. I look good when I like look the maces. How about bashing, right? I don't think I really can. Right? <laughs> That's strong enough. I mean, anyone can bash. You just might not be good at it. I mean, I have. Yeah. It's, it's your call, Luna. I'm not pressuring you. Just an idea. Yeah. Uh, you all right, Brad? You have. I look at his like super awesome sword that has a name. How is that working out for you? No, oh, it's great. <laughs> I want to find some more dragons. <laughs> Hopefully, we will. Speaking of which, I hope that. Uh, Maybe I could use these, too, because I, I look back and I remember my dragon scales I have that I wanted to forge something out of. But we need to proceed, I think. Um, next door. Threaten them, Brad. Tell them what's what. Yes, sir. You going to kick it in the oh, door? I kick the door wide open and go, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we'll take a break. Uh, we'll be back in here. Give us 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we'll come back and pick up right where we left off. Thank you so much for... Uh, sticking with us and please stick with us till we get back uh in the meantime we're going to get some drinks and use the restroom so we'll be right back
patient with us while we uh, took care of business. Um, so if you are just joining us or wasn't with us before, uh, our group just finished handling a giant fire elemental that was summoned uh, by some fire newts and now we're kind of exploring uh, this, uh, I guess, forge named uh, Hakramar. Um, that has been taken over by these fire nudes that was previously owned by the dwarves. So, you guys have finished the fight. You went into a room that had uh, a few sets of dwarven armor, some weapons. You found a really nice bow, although it's missing the string. Uh, and now you have kicked in the door mm -hmm. to the next room. Go ahead and roll it. Just roll a d20 for me. Okay. 19. Okay, so, as luck would have it, when you kick this door open, because uh, as you walk, uh, as you're walking and traversing these rooms, um, the hammering, that cling, 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 is louder and louder. And when you kick this door open, um, I know it's just boxes here, but we're gonna pretend, because we're living in pretend world, when we play D&D, &D, um, that this is essentially a large, uh, well, let me uncover here. Uh, it's it's a fairly uh, decent sized room. You know what, I'll just go ahead and uncover all this because YOLO, maybe? There we go. Uh, you go in, and there are a set of anvils there. Um, and there is one uh, fire newt there. And as you kick in this door, right when you kick it in is right when a <laughs> hammer hits. So this thing has not heard you kick in the door, and it does not see you. Okay. Well, then I'm going to try to do my... Cool. You're gonna do your signature move. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll with advantage. Like a just uh, d20 or like an attacking roll. Uh, d20. Uh, roll roll and attack like with your weapon with advantage. So roll twice and take the higher of the two. And that 19 for the first one. Yeah, boy. Okay. That's a crit, eh? That's yeah, it is. Uh -huh. uh, roll for fun. For he gets two attacks. He gets two attacks. Oh shit, that's right. 13 for the second one. Okay. You pull off your signature move. <laughs> you run up, sh shake it in the side while you're on its back, and then ugh, cut its throat, and this kind of red, orangish red, almost looks like lava, but blood kind of splatters out onto this anvil as this thing collapses onto it. Uh, and when it hits the floor, ting, 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 ting. ting. A small glowing key uh, falls from its pouch. Yay! Walk in. I'll walk into the door. Well done, Brad. I'm assuming. <laughs> As I, always. I have blood on my face. You right? did it all yeah. over. Yeah. I'm just going to look back. Thanks. And we kind of like licked the corner of my mouth, trying to lick some of that blood up. <laughs> see if I like the taste <laughs> of it. Uh, Don't know if you should do that. I tastes like hot in. sauce. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Right. To you. To you, it tastes right. like hot sauce. Hey, Sigour, you got any of those empty uh, uh, vials? I could have one or two. I think I have three <laughs> more that I can use. Can I, can I have one or two? You know what? Sure. You've earned, you've earned more than such. I, I'll dig through my side pouch and take out two little glass vials that had old, like, liquid for bug repellent in them and hand them over. I'm going to try to fill them up with the blood. <laughs> you did. Okay. You, you, you fill them up. Did you say you were grabbing the key? 
Okay, uh, so you have one uh, magical looking key. It's, a, it's a, actually a fairly small key. Um, not anything really special to it outside of that. It does have a light glow to it. What does it look like this dude was working on? Like, was he just pounding on an anvil? Or was there like... He was not pounding on an anvil. He was just standing there. The, the clanging continues. Oh. King! King! Um... Brad? One more! Alright, go up. I go up to the door, kick it open. <laughs> Here's Johnny! So, let me animate this. <laughs> Here's, here's Johnny. Jesus. You kick the door. There's no one in here. However, there is a large steam-powered anvil, uh, new like hydraulic, ding, ding, just ding, clanging down over and over again, right in the center of this room. Oh wow! Automation, marvelous. And everything in here definitely 100% dwarven. So it looks like it's just a couple of irons and like a middle big. Uh, yeah, it's 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 almost shaped like a like a boat almost, uh, and this thing basically extends all the way up into the <laughs> ceiling of this room. Bless you, Luna, and and it just continues very rhythmically. King, king, coming down. It's not working on anything. Not working on anything. It seems like these firemen really had no clue how to operate most of this stuff, but. They see you see the uh, or you see a decent amount of weaponry kind of laying around the room. Not very impressive by any means, but definitely enough to, to get by, especially if you're in large numbers. No, what about throwing things? Are you already throwing things? I mean, I, I just feel like if I were throwing things, I would just cast a spell. Well, what if you don't want to use your your magical prowess? You know, what if you had? Uh, want to save it for something else. I mean, I have three ones that I could just do. Well, I guess that's true. I was going to suggest maybe finding a, a few throwing knives or something in here, maybe, but no, no, never mind. Um, I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be like a Debbie Downer. It's just, I'm just not really that, like, good at stuff like that. Oh, don't, don't put yourself down like that. Yeah, don't worry. Score's not either. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that, I mean, I have my moments here and there. But uh, that's that's fine. That's that, that's fine. There's nothing else in this room that looks interesting, right? Not particularly. Um, you know, it's just like are... when you're bad at something, you just have to admit it sometimes. Like, there I'm are... just bad at stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'm bad. Yeah, it's a door. Sometimes you just gotta admit it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing real of... Uh, Nothing that stands out to you in this room. A couple more vats of melted, uh, kind of molten um, uh, iron or something that looks like they were using to probably smelt weapons, armor, crude armor, okay. something like that. In that case... Uh... So uh, there's a door. So in the previous room that you were in, there's a door that went to the east. And then in this room, there's also a door that faces to the east. Let's, uh... Is your foot all right? You don't have to kick in the next one if you don't want to. I mean, if, if you want me to, I can kick it in. All these doors have been completely unlocked so far. Well, let me ask you, do you want <laughs> to kick it in? Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> all right, I'm going to run up and kick the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you <clears throat> kick the door in, uh, and you see uh, probably a, about a 40-foot uh, hallway 40? that seems to lead... Uh, out into an opening where um, that that orange hue seems to go, but there's a few, uh, there's four, two doors on each side, so four doors on each side of that hallway as you go down. Wait a second. Was there a, there was a door in the room previous? Yes. I look down, I look down deeply concerned for a second, and then I just say, I've made a terrible mistake, as I turn around, <laughs> and I, I, I walk north without motioning anyone to follow me, I just go, Okay. and you, I go to that door up there immediately. You both see Sigor just turn around and walk <laughs> away, back into the previous room, right after you kick the door in. Sigor? Just hold on, just, I have to, okay, this has to be done. Or come with me, either way. <laughs> I mean, I feel like we, come on. I mean, you just told me to kick the door open. I just, right. you, my voice just trembled. It's just, the door, this, this. Yeah, yeah oh. you, you hear him. It's just the door, it's the door. <laughs> then, yeah, I guess I'll try to catch back up. Okay. So you go up to the door in this room. Open it. Immediately. <laughs> Zzz, 
So when you open it up, there's another long, probably 40 foot hallway that seems to open up uh, into a uh, into that larger cavern. Uh, and then it leads to another, you can see actually from here that le- there's another uh, stone bridge that leads across I hate it. the uh, lava here. Um, the other thing, uh, if you, actually both of you roll a perception check. Perception. 10. Perception. 17. Okay. You notice uh, one thing as you're going into the hallway. Um, as you walk into this long hallway, right at the very beginning of it, there is an iron lever uh, in the upward position. It looks like it can be pulled down. Hey, guys, there's a lever right there. You can pull it down. Really? Yeah, it's right at, there. Can't you see it? Is it, like, in the door? It's so, it's like, you walk through the door, and then you look to the left, and then the lever's on the wall. You see the lever right it's, it's right there, Sephora. You you could basically turn around and see it. Yeah, I'll pull the lever. <laughs> it gives a little resistance when you pull down on it. Um, and after it uh, is pulled all the way down, you hear a... And when you look, you see the bridge that's out leading to the east start retracting in. Oh, towards no! Me. In towards me? Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, way to go. I don't know. This, this means we're in the correct area. If the bridge is retracting towards us, that means it's it's pulling away from the other side because the other side leads away from this forge area. That would make sense. That makes sense, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah, Brad. Maybe we'll come back here in a bit. Yeah. yeah. Brad, I don't think, <laughs> I'm not sure if you understand, but I'm going to take your word for it. Uh, we'll come back to the retracty bridge later. I want to go. Let's, let's head back down to the door you kicked in. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. And sometimes I just kind of, I had to go back. Just understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're heading back down to kicked over door with four doors. It looks like on north and south. Okay. I say to Brad, admitting you have a problem is the first step. <laughs> At least he's admitting it now. <laughs> uh, so I'm assuming you are going basically to each of those four doors. Um, or how are you doing it? We should probably check out this one up ahead to the left, and then the one ahead of that to the left, and then that big room, and then we'll look back around, and we'll check that first room on the south from the right, and then the second room on the south on the right. Does everyone agree with us? Sure. Yeah, well, whatever you say. <laughs> Which one are you checking first? <laughs> the first one to the left. <laughs> uh, so, opening that door, uh, you see that... It is another, some sort of like storage room. There's boxes and crates in here still with more kind of crudely fashioned weapons and armor. Um, You also see a couple of, uh, like two actually, uh, little makeshift bed rolls in here. Probably used by the fire news, if you had to guess. Gross. And by by bed rolls, I mean like... Like hay, not hay, but like... Yeah, just just crap. It's like a bird's nest. Two little Mm. tiny shitty bird's nests. No, that would... That looks like heaven. Yeah. Let's... Right. Okay. So I'll make a move out of this room. Okay. And head to the next one. I'll save you all time. You go into all four. Okay. And all four of them look exactly the same. Fire nude hidey holes? Yep. Uh, probably there were fire nudes there before every... All the chaos with the uh, giant birds uh, ensued that caused everything to drain out. So that was actually a pretty brilliant move. He's hoping Patron Lucan dealt with that appropriately. They're, they're tough. Here's ones. hoping. <laughs> Lucan, Patron, <laughs> hope you're okay out there. <laughs> so I, I, I want to walk out to the, I don't know, open area at the end of the hallway then. Okay. There was a, I could have sworn that Dwarf said there was a gauntlet or something he was interested in finding. Yeah, there was. So keep your eyes peeled still, folks. Surely it's here somewhere. We might have gone past it. (laughs) So, stepping out onto this terrace, uh, you can see uh, pretty clearly uh, the the bridge that has now retracted uh, inwards, uh, or where it was, rather, and then looking to the south, uh, you see 
hanging from large, heavy chains across the ceiling. There are more of those big iron buckets that seem to, you know, kind of ferry uh, those things probably from the molten area into the refinery. Mm. I just loop around south to see if we can find any points of interest down here. So far, it just looks like we're outside and there's those giant carry bucket boys. But I don't think there's anything else out here, is there? Uh, looping around to the south side of that terrace, yes, it ends up being kind of a dead end. You can look over and see about 15 feet down uh, is the that that essentially a river of lava that has flowed through this entire place. Well, damn. Um, um, across the other side, you see kind of another terrace uh, and some entrances into kind of some cave areas with kind of smoke coming out of them. Smoke coming out of the cave areas? Yeah, I mean, so there's a lot of steam and smoke coming out of them. Oh, because I got you. I got you. Um... Did they say one of the newts had that gauntlet? Or did they just say it was he just say it was here somewhere? To my recollection, he just said it was here somewhere. I thought he said the warlord had it. With the forelock thing. That Wait. honcho thing. And was it another fire nude? Do you remember? I I just remember him saying head honcho's got key and gauntlet thing. I just have dwarf gauntlet to find. Alright, so do you maybe we spend the next 30 minutes we'll fan out and just poke around see if we could find something there's a mine car back there we could have looked in there's a table there's a, that armory room maybe it was just laying on the floor in there somewhere I don't know should we take some time to look around sure why not split up yep. go for it uh-huh. I'll look for a healing potion also <laughs> okay. so we're, we're gonna fan out through the whole forgery and just look for this look for this gauntlet okay everybody make a perception check for me I got a 16. I got a 6. I got a 12. <laughs> okay. Uh, so looking out and around and really searching through a lot of this stuff, uh, none of you find a gauntlet, but Sigor, you do find about nine more arrows. Oh. Uh, usable arrows, some of them just too shoddy. Um, but yeah, no gauntlet anywhere. Um, you do, I mean, you, you found a key on a lone warlock that was standing there. Um, it was kind of dressed a little differently than the other. I think that Brad used his uh, WWE finisher on it. And I'll just wait at the... I'll wait kind of in the middle of the little area where they're pouring lava in the middle. No, like, miner's first aid kit? Like, in no, case it burns, you don't find, here's you don't a find burn any, rub. You don't find any uh, healing kits. Um... If, uh, so were you pretty much exploring everywhere? Wait, the idea was we go through, like, we're, we're, we're not doing it all together. Like, I'm checking out the the room where the newt slept, like, thoroughly, and then I'm gotcha. checking the room near. And Luna was maybe checking the armory and the table up there, and Brad was checking the other tables in the main room and in mine cart and just looking inside of them and doing Brad things. I mean, gotcha. probably something else I don't know about. Um, probably. Uh... Make a cigar if you would make a make an investigation check for me. I will investigate something. I'll do it poorly. Uh, seven. JD, are you still recording from the break? I am. Okay. Oh, good reminder. Good reminder. I never stop. I just stopped. I just let it go now. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what I can tell you is that. Uh, up until this point, every entry into every cavern that you've been into at this point, mine, cavern, forge, what what have you, uh, has been, uh, you've been, you've both entered and exit, exited uh, by way of a path that has a minecart uh, track on it. So... Um, you are able to deduce that probably uh, if there's a way in or out of here, it probably has a minecart track on it. And if there's a way that's not necessarily leading out of here, 
because a forge and a miner is, is typically an import export type deal it, there's probably no cart there to cart track there okay that's good enough um, I'll wait in the big room for everyone to regroup at me okay everybody regrouping in there mm -hmm. okay all right. uh, as soon as yeah. I walk up but you find uh, nothing 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 Damn, Brett? Uh, I found out fire newts are pretty yummy. I'll be honest, I expected that, so I'm not angry. <laughs> but thank you for trying. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll, uh, I found a few arrows, so that was nice. So I got, I got a lot more shots now. I'm ready to go for that. No, maybe you'll hit them. I was... Hearing about yumminess, I'm going to actually have a rest. Just heard Because I'm feeling a little bit <laughs> Yeah, go for it. I'd say in this time, you kind of do short rest healing if I'm, you want to. I'm stress eating. I'll do, you'll do a quick short rest. Yeah. With a little 30. 30 minutes. Short, rest. Short, short, short. I'll spend Which I think gives you pretty much everything back. Just right. about. I think I. Too good. Oh, a short sure rest doesn't do anything with my spells, does it? Hmm? Or sorcerer points? You can roll hit die, right? Huh? Yeah, hit die. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Do we know, like, our. Are the fire newt things, are they like afraid of anything or like don't like anything or like do we know anything like that? Hard to say now. Seems like most of them are dead. I'm just saying in case if we run across any more of them. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I had an idea during battle, but I, I didn't know how to pull it off, so I didn't bother. Uh, you have that alchemist jug, don't you? Jug, don't you? I do. Can it not produce like 12 to 20 gallons of water? I feel like if we just dumped it on one, it'd be the equivalent of dumping lava on a human, yeah? Maybe? Maybe. That guy was swimming in lava. Surely water sucks for him, right? Just a yes. I don't know. But I didn't, there was no time to pull something like that off. Yeah, I mean, possibly. That's a good point. Mm. Like, I'm melting. Water out. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Mm. I just wonder, though, if I pour water on it, would I be injured by the steam that would come off of it? Clear up your nasal passages. I mean, I have been sneezing, so maybe that would do me some good and more mm -hmm. so than bad. Okay, yeah. I see. All right, so you're all back in the main room. So, I was going to suggest we go ahead and go use the key to free uh, that uh, dwarf for a long way with get Patron and Lucan back, but uh, I had an idea. I was thinking, uh, the way we've come in here and the, all the exits have involved mine tr cart tracks so far, and that bridge we retracted... And nothing of the sort, meaning I may have been way wrong in my assumption of saying it leads out of this forge. <laughs> and instead, it perhaps leads to something that they don't want everyone to easily access, thus it has a lever. So, check that out real quick. Why not? Yeah, I mean... Very well. I casually stroll back to that spot. Okay, pull, pull you make lever. it back to the lever. Goom, 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 goom. Extends back. Yeah, I'll just walk across it. Okay. Uh, you do. Let me uncover some shiz here. Okay. So, when you make it to the other side of the bridge, uh, there are two suits of dwarven half plate armor that stand on either side of an adamantine banded door. These suits of armor were probably beautiful once, but now they're scarred by weapons, scorched by fire, and smeared with filth. The door has two locks, one above the other, and there is a, another side room to your north. Uh, can I just kind of look in that side room? Cock, yeah. cock my head and look? Yeah, make a perception check. Uh, nine. Okay. Um, so in here, uh, you mostly see just an empty room, kind of hollowed out. Uh, basically a room that's been carved out of a cave, essentially. Uh, you do think you see something laying in the corner, though. It's just a carved out room, but I think I see something in the corner in there? A small item on the floor. I lean back kind of hesitantly. This, this seems, mmm. This, look, look in here, both of you. Look, tell me what do you see. What do you I see? I look. I point towards the thing in the corner. Hmm. Yep. Uh, it's something that's probably about 
that big by that big. Does it look like it's black slime to me? I'll walk up. Wait, 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 look, 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 look. Is she already going? Are you already going? Yeah, she's already going. I hear him like, what, what is it? All right, I need every, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Uh, So when you walk up, uh, you see actually a um, curious uh, little steel box uh, on the ground. Or an iron, iron or steel. Guys, I think it's my first aid kit. It's, do you not find it suspicious? You're in a carved out room with one box you're now standing at in there, and I'm looking at the level. Where's it? I'm looking for arrows to come fly out of the ground, the spikes to skewer her. To, I'm looking for all sorts of shit to just mess up her head right now. Um, based on your n- nine perception check, I don't see it. I know you don't, I don't, you don't see really anything. No, but, but I, I cut my sinus off just frantically looking around yeah. as she's doing. Brad, what she you wants. think it's fine, right? Yeah. I, just I mean, I don't think it. anyone else here is looking for this stuff. <laughs> I don't see anyone around. I clearly need it more than everyone else. Yeah. I'm kind of apprehensive because Sabor here, being the worry wart, I'm like. You make a perception check. Are those suits standing at the boat next to the door? Mm-hmm. <laughs> My anxiety's going off the charts right now. Seven. Did they have Xanax in medieval times? <laughs> what was it? Seven. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't really detect anything that would be in any harm. I mean, it looks fine. Sigurd, so like... We are in dwarvish... I'll, I'll call them ruins. I'll safely call them ruins now. With some sort of arcane door and two most likely protecting said door ironclad suits and you're in a room with a box in the corner and you know what can I do like an arcana check or something like is there magic attached to this box or is it just uh, a you box you can do an arcana check I want to walk back uh, to the retractable bridge and walk like 10 feet 16? on it okay. turn around take my bow out okay go ahead <laughs> maybe 16 there doesn't seem to be anything magical maybe about. there's the keys are in there I hope so <laughs> <laughs> and then you just hear in the back in, in the distance King. <laughs> King from that uh, forge still just... It's not magical. She, he can barely hear you at this point. You gotta yell it. You hear it. It's not magical. Oh. She's doing it there. Well, t- take it! <laughs> <laughs> Brad, I'm a little scared. Should I? I mean, if you don't want to, I will. I'm gonna walk out. Brad, I'm nervous. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Y'all are giving me anxiety. <laughs> I'm gonna walk right past her and just... Like kick it open or try to open okay. it. Okay. Uh, oh, when no. you when you kick it, uh, it kind of it's definitely made of some kind of steel or iron or something, and it kind of almost like an empty lunchbox sound as it kind oh, of no. uh, skitters across the floor, but nothing happens. No. Okay. Gave me anxiety for nothing. So there's nothing in there. Can I open it? Like, is there? You can go pick it up if you want. Yeah, I'll pick it up. Try to open it. Examine it. Okay, uh, when you pick it up, uh, it looks to be uh, in in the shape of a like a book. Uh, book. But it's made of iron or steel or or something. It's not it's not a normal book. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are some strange, uh, like the language. It, it's got a, uh, basically something written on the front. When you flip it over, there's something written on the back, but they're two different, uh, basically two different symbols, essentially. Uh... Well, let me look at that. <laughs> okay. What kind of languages are written in? Uh, what languages do you know? Well, I'm glad you asked. I know common, elvish, and dwarvish. Okay. They are definitely dwarvish symbols. Uh, what What does it say here? Uh, make an investigation check with, in, with advantage. For me. First one, investigation... 13 over 20, non-natural. Okay. I got my reading glasses on today. So, on one side of it, uh, you see the Dwarvish script uh, written, and it seems to uh, say beginnings. Hmm. And then when you flip it over, uh, it says uh, endings. Beginnings and endings? What... So you basically got a kind of the steel book uh, with hinges on it, and on one side it says beginnings, and on one side it says endings. So can I just like do like this number and like? Sure. Yeah. It opens up. Inside, uh, 
there is no letters, there's no pages, there's no anything. But what, what there is uh, seems to be a mold uh, of a key. And when you open up the other side, there seems to be a mold of a different key. So it looks like we could make a, two different keys in here. What? <laughs> I said it looks like we could make two different keys in here. I guess she's actually okay. I'll put my bow up and I'll, I'll walk back up to the chasm, or the little little entryway. Make two different, what are you talking about? Take me to make two different keys. Yeah, so like, look, there's a beginning, so that's what, can you read Warnish, by the way? No. So it says beginnings on this side, and then on this side it says endings. Can you read Dwarver Spread? I don't think I read much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know common and goblin language. But okay, I don't know, yeah, I know so, I read. Yeah. <laughs> so, both of you guys. Um, beginnings, endings. Two different molds for keys. Now, we have, I have a key, and then you said we found a key. Did you say we found a key? So the key, the... The molds for the keys in this book are much larger than the key that you picked up. These are definitely not the keys that we have found. They probably go to that. I point at the door with two key holes on it. Oh, so the keys are in the box. No, they're, these are like, molds for keys. I mean, close enough. We gotta put molten metal in them and make the keys, which I'm not familiar with how to do. And am hesitant to try. Um, just looking at that door, can I do a... Actually, no. Luna, uh, can you double check and see if that door is actually enchanted with the mystics that you do? I mean, I can I can try. I can give it a... Give it a try. You go up to the door? Okay, make a perception check for me. Well, I didn't mean walk up, up to it, Luna. Nine. Okay, so looking at the two locks on this door, um, there's one above the other. Um, the top one is kind of etched out in adamantine and says in Dwarvish, beginnings. Hmm. The bottom one uh, has just been completely like scraped off, uh, but you, your best guess is that it probably said uh, endings. Uh, and you can tell, uh, the other thing you are able to determine with that is that it is uh, trapped. So possibly if you don't have the key, bad things happen. Definitely need the keys to open this. Brad, did you hear? Don't try. It's you said to go open the door? No. <laughs> you, you determined it was magical? It's it was It was not a magical lock. It's not necessarily or magical, uh, trap. magical, but it's like... We don't have the keys. Bad things happen if we try. Well, how do we? Do we want to? Do you want to try to use your molds to make the keys? Yeah. This week on HGTV, um, <laughs> we make keys. Um. How would we? Would we put? Would we dump? Can I check my knowledge banks and know if I know remotely the beginning of the process to do this? Uh. Well, I mean, you. You have what? You have smithing tools. No. No, I did not. What do I? Um, <laughs> making the double jinx check for me. <laughs> Six. You think you could try? We could pull Maybe. this off. <laughs> I've got a miner's helmet. Does that give me a plus to anything? So you have a helmet with a candle attached yeah. to the front of it. <laughs> I mean, worst case scenario, we go get the dwarf, help us out with this. Because assuming that this key... Oh, that's so genius! Assuming that mm -hmm. this key unlocks the dwarf man... Yeah, and then he can just help us make it. Yeah, but I, get, I mean, we can give it a shot first. I don't want to ruin the molds, though. Well, I mean, he's a dwarf, he knows how to fix it. <laughs> I, like this whole thing here is, is theirs, right? I will follow your lead actually on this, Brad, because I don't. I think we can do it. I just don't. I mean, do we just dip, do we just take a dip it in that silvery stuff and then it comes out? 
I feel like what we would have to do, this is just me, we, we fill it with the lava stuff or something, you know, whatever ore thing we have, like silver or something. Put it in there, we close her up, put her in the water to cool it, we take it out, and then we got a key, right? That's how they do it. Does Luna actually know how to do this? It sounds like she knows how to do this. I feel like I'm smart enough. Like, uh, that's the thing, right? You just put the put the metal in it, close her up, dip it into water, and then it cools it, and then now you got a key. I mean, that sounds, that sounds good to me. Uh, you, yeah, I'm right behind you, Luna. <laughs> Look, I have no idea what I'm doing. That, I, just reasoning. That sounds like what you would do, right? We should probably... find a hot metal, put it in the thing. We should probably it. go to Master Dwarf. And then you're good. That's my vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's... Luna, bring, bring that with you. Let's, let's head back and fill them in that we've cleared the cave of their threat and we found a room we want to get in. Brad, yeah, had, Brad has friended dog. I was going to say that, <laughs> that it was my, my pet mouse. Patron, eat your heart out. <laughs> oh. Patron, eat your heart out. I don't remember that dude's name. No. Oh. We love dags. I don't know that dwarf's name. I'm not, I'll, I'll, I'll play it off. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can make an intelligence check to try to remember. No, that. no, I'll just be, I'll be cordial. <laughs> okay. So what? So what are we doing? We're going back to the patron and Lucan and Master Dwarf hidey hole. <laughs> okay. And that's where we're gonna end tonight. Uh, so you you make your way back. You see patron and Lucan there, uh, and we'll pick up right there next week where we will have everybody back. Uh, so our three-man Splinter Cell mission was a success tonight, I would say. Yeah. We're live. We, uh, we didn't all die, right? Yeah. So I we got that going for us. I, I got ammo. If, if my dad asks if I won tonight, I'll tell him I won. <laughs> <laughs> Did, exactly. Dad, I, I won d and I won d and uh, But you have to, when you talk to him, you have to do it in Brad voice. He's going to pick up the dead. Dad. <laughs> dad. I won the D&D. <laughs> I'm going to go try to win it again next weekend. <laughs> oh, um, oh, so, I yes. Lady up here. Lady. Hope, uh, we, got her, we got her on camera. She's hey. had her her, uh, her five here. minutes no, of time. No, Back up. Back up. Lady, come here. Everybody watch our disobedient dog. Lady, come here. Come here. Um, <laughs> awesome. She doesn't Lady, want. She here. doesn't want it. Now come back. <laughs> this is our mascot. This is dog mascot. Can everybody see her? This is Lady. Like Lady. and subscribe and comment for dog mascot. So oh, that's Aww. cute. That's cute. So Somebody clip that. She's clip so the doggy kisses. She's so cute. Okay. Oh, Anyways, oh, so that was fun and all. Uh, special thanks again to Dwarven Forge. For the awesome uh, terrain, uh, I have had a lot of fun building with it. i am got plenty, so we're going to be building uh, as many encounters as I have pieces for as we go forward. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll come up with a better setup for all of this uh, in the future. So bear with us while we experiment with that. Uh, if you enjoyed what you watched with us tonight, please consider giving us a follow. It is free. It costs you nothing, but it helps us out, and we greatly appreciate it. Um, tell, your, tell your friends, hide your kids, hide your wife, you know, all that stuff, whatever. I don't know. It's been a long day. Uh, so we'll be back next Saturday, 8 o'clock, Central Standard Time. In the meantime, uh, between now and then, we'll be streaming some more stuff. I know uh, Sigour is going to be streaming something. Yeah, it's always something random. Yeah, I never know until I get there. We'll do it live, right? Exactly. We do this live. Uh, so until next time, thank you again for watching. Uh, we hope you join us next week. Have a great night. Bye! Bye! -bye.